I'm Andy Weinberg with Miller Welders Motorsports. Today I'm with Craig Carrione at his home shop where we're working on a project where he's building a bumper for his Can-Am side-by-side. Craig, tell us a little bit about your project and the steps you're going to go through. Uh, with my side-by-side, -side, for my racing purposes, I looked at the aftermarket and there really wasn't a bumper that fit what I was looking for. So I started out with a concept, kind of got it in my head what I was looking to do, and then uh, start, went from there and figured out my bend angles. Uh, and inspect out my materials, which is a 4130 chrome alloy. With that 4130 chrome alloy, you gotta be real mindful of your, uh, of cleaning up your weld area and real mindful of your gaps. Uh, fit up is real critical on this stuff, so you get a nice, good flowing weld bead and uh, make for nice, strong welds. Especially with the 4130 chrome alloy, because 4130 chrome alloy is a very temperature sensitive base metal. The more time you're spending welding, the more the heat effect zone grows, and that's where cracking can develop. Craig's going to be using the Synchrowave 210 TIG welder for this project. He's setting the machine on DC and using about 100 amps of power, which he'll regulate using the foot control. The filler metal for this project is going to be the ER312. It's a stainless blended rod and it has a lot of tinsel strength. But for this bumper application, we don't need that elongation percentages where we would normally see in welding a roll cage. With roll cages, it's critical to have the elongation percentages so that when you get in a crash, the weld area stretches with the weld bead. With this bumper application, that stretch at the weld bead is not that critical. We're just looking for strength here. Because this is a one-off application, uh, we're fixturing in place on the machine. I'm using the same 312 rod that Andy had mentioned earlier to do the tacks on this piece before we unbolt it and put it on the bench for finished welding. The reason we do that is because uh, I find that there's a little bit less popping when you take it off of the machine than when you're using, say, a 70 or 80 series rod. Thanks, Craig, for letting us invade your shop and showing us your project. What's the next step, actually? Uh, next step is uh, get a couple extra mounts on here, back to the factory mounts, a skid plate on the bottom, and uh, mount a 10-inch off-road light in here for some extra illumination. Craig used the Syncowave 210 TIG welder for this project, and you can learn more about it at MillerWelds.com.